It all started with a trebuchet. I was inspired by helping a friend who built a small trebuchet on his birthday, and I thought it'd be fun to make a larger one that I could use to launch pumpkins. So the idea was that during Thanksgiving out on the farm, we could launch pumpkins like clay pigeons and then do some skeet shooting. So to test the trebuchet, I needed some ammo. So I bought a bunch of pumpkins from a family uh, farm down the street. Now my daughter picked out one of the tinier pumpkins and she wanted to paint it so I couldn't launch it. It wasn't allowed to be used as ammo. So fast forward two weeks, Halloween is just a week away and I have an inching desire to stuff electronics into a pumpkin. The previous year I had a bunch of fun stringing EO wire through a pumpkin to make a face. But this year I wanted to do something with just a little bit more pizzazz. And it was still something I wanted to complete in an evening and I didn't want to have to buy any parts to make it. So I had a bunch of blue LEDs and an Arduino sitting around, so I thought maybe it could be something to easy hash out. LEDs, pumpkin, Arduino, I mean, could anything be much easier? Well, it wasn't quite as easy as I thought. Now, I did get it hashed out in an evening and about 30 minutes the next day to load some code, but have you ever had that feeling where you're in the middle of a project and things aren't quite fleshing out like you thought they should? you have that pang of concern that, oh crap, this might not just work out. And you've spent enough time to the point where you really, you know, it would really stink just to drop the project. But you wonder if going any further is just going to kind of prolong a looming failure. So this usually happens to me if I jump into a project with no forethought whatsoever. Like I, I haven't taken the time to take pen to paper and think, think things through. I just start soldering and I don't look back and this project was no exception. I realized that the pumpkin I started with was too small and then I had been way too sloppy when I started cu cutting my wire lengths. The ground wires were just too short and this made for a really frustrating try time trying to stuff the LEDs in in the pumpkin and get the ground wires collected up in one place and so I needed a way to collect the grounds all up. What I decided to do is just drill mo more holes in my pumpkin. I thought maybe I could like braid the ground wires outside of the pumpkin and, the cl and then get them all together on the outside. And I thought, well, cool, this will be like an electronic Frankensteinian type look. You know, at least that's kind of what I justified myself as I was drilling holes in the pumpkin. And then I realized that the braiding thing really wasn't going to work. That wasn't going to be a good solution. So then I thought about using conductive thread to join all the grounds. And with all the wires sticking out of the pumpkin and the thread connecting them all, it kind of made it look like a spider web was emanating around the pumpkin. And thank goodness it worked, so I actually managed to pull it off. And the best part yet was that my daughter really liked it. You know, I really believe that every project has a story behind it, and the, the story is really kind of half the fun of making the project and showing the project off. It's because it has that story behind it. So I would love to hear the story behind your Halloween project. You can check me out on Facebook at uh, Facebook. Just search for Open Source Hardware Group. You'll find me there. Or you can go to the website and, uh, and share your story there. If you want to make your own Arduino LED pumpkin project for Halloween, then you can check out the Open Source Hardware Group website. I do a step-by-step -step written tutorial where I walk through how I made this, and uh, you can make something pretty similar pretty easy. All right, take it easy, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.